There's 100 million uh, children around the world who uh, are not in school right now. And we know one of the, the major reasons is in much of the developing world, you actually have to pay uh, to go to school. Of the 94 poor countries in the world, only 16 uh, don't have fees. We have seen, and Kenya is, is one of the best examples of this, when the fees are eliminated, enrollment skyrockets. This really has been our biggest problems. One of them is to provide access. Number two is to ensure that we also expand access. We do ensure that quality is not compromised. The third thing which is important is that because secondary education in Kenya has been very expensive, we have to make it affordable. We have decided to waive all these fees, this is tuition fees. And that, that we believe um, is very important. And, and it's not just only for, you know, for the first cohort, I mean, all through. If you get good teachers, and then set the expectation level at a competitive, worldwide competitive level. It's amazing what can be achieved. But if you don't set that expectation level high enough, you just get absolutely average or sub-average performance. So we have always focused on the magic in the classroom as a teacher. If you have teachers with good skills, you get good results. The teacher is at the center, really, of quality. Access itself, and I believe that is really the main uh, topic today, is not sufficient. One has also to implement other reforms to ensure that there is quality education that is being provided. Because education per se, without quality, is not going to be able to achieve the desired result. And I would like my provincial directors of education to note these figures. And uh, Madam Pierce, I've noted with a certain level of notoriety that there are some PDs missing here in some of my functions. And I'm not taking it very kindly. It's either lack of what they're supposed to do or where they're supposed to be at a very critical moment like this. And I like that aspect of it noted with, with the seriousness it deserves. Uh, and in major functions of this nature, I've noted one or two who are constantly absent. And I take key note on the interest that they have in the education sector. If you have no interest, then look for other green pastures elsewhere. What do you think um, will take Kenya to the next level in terms of, you know, advanced education and, of course, um, meeting the Millennium Development Goals surrounding education, poverty, etc.? Nonetheless, in Kenya, we have made uh, very steady progress. We started this program in 2003. The total enrollment in our primary schools was 5.9 million. Today, as I talk to you, we are about 9.36 million children in our primary school, an increase of about 59%. Uh, looking at the secondary education, which was a late comer in the program in 2008, we started with a, a total enrollment of 1.38 million children. Now we are at the level of uh, 1.7 million children. Again, a very dramatic increase. I would never accept a miniskirt, even in the workplace. Why are you dressing a schoolgirl like a nun? I will have the sample skirt that had been prepared for them and that they rejected, and the new skirt. And then the bishops can tell me how the new skirt can undermine morality. Sasa niombe radhi kwa jambo ambalo sijafanya. The Ministry of Education issued a circular in 2008 banning extra tuition during break time, lunch, after school, weekends, and during holidays. The circular is reference number MEO GNGI stroke 11 stroke 4 was issued by the then PS in my ministry, the uh, Professor Karega Mutai, on 18th July 2008. The purpose of that policy was aimed at strengthening the provisions of the existing Teachers Service Commission Code of Conduct and Ethics published as legal notice number 137 of 2003. Similarly, for those in the country, particularly in the teaching fraternity, who are not aware of it, it's here. As a government to recognize the importance of the great role of a lecturer, over teacher in our, in, in our institutions. That is why consistently as a government, 
we have endeavored to address the welfare of our teachers, contrary to some union members who think otherwise. We have given teachers new allowances, including leave allowance. Yet you know teachers are on leave or when or leave when students are away, isn't it? For 90 days in a year. Yet you give them leave allowance so that they feel appreciated. We also gave them traveling allowances, even though some of them stay in school. Again, in the spirit of appreciating what our teachers do. I came here and I talked to universities. Did you hear me talk to universities? Those are the things that you should also go and talk about. Don't talk about controversial matters alone. We are here to educate Kenyans, to inform them and to tell them the reforms that eh, are taking place in it. Yeah. So please remember that. And I challenge them to remember to be sensitive to certain things. And chief among them, which I see, I hope is important, is the need for them to observe confidentiality in the discharge of their duties. Because what we have witnessed in recent times is all manner of, of confidential information leaking to the press. To the extent that we, uh, it's like we want to destroy the image of certain institutions, there are certain things recent which are no more, and they don't need to be played out there. Let me give you an example. If we decide as an institution, X, to terminate the services of certain individuals within the law, within the confines of our procedure, why should that be a matter of debate in the public? In the, in the public? It is should it. Or, if you need to transfer somebody, then people uh, go back to the tribal court, the coast, it should not happen. That's number one. It's the need for all of us to work as a team. And working as a team means that every part in an institution does what they should do. And I noticed in the press again, I read today, uh, that uh, in certain institutions, the chief executives are not working very closely with their deputies. And I did ap appeal to them today, and I said, please, it is the, in the interest first of all teamwork, to make sure they should make sure that they delegate them. You can imagine a scenario where the, uh, the deputy vice chancellor in charge of academic affairs, but they don't deal on day-to-day -day basis with the academic affairs as you should. It's, that's not the case there. If you're working as a team, that must be done. I think we need to subscribe to the principle of delegation. Because when you delegate, it is part of succession plans. You make sure that you, say, you are succeeded by men and women who are heavy. But if you deny others opportunities to act, and that can be done. And how? Remember me saying again, you might find that in an institution, you have four deputies. But it's only one deputy, a favored deputy, who is always acting in an acting capacity. That's not fair. Enough. So these are things that we need to promote. You need to promote them. Finally, I did mention about the need and gain to address corruption and also tribalism in our institutions, whether education or otherwise. Yeah. If somebody is a chief executive of an institution, you cannot keep employing people from your own village. And we have seen it here and there. And it is for you again to keep on fighting against this. It's not proper. We are not in these jobs to be popular. We are here to do the right thing, and I will do the right thing. We must sort this thing out. Honorable members, Upper Lazma to Kubaliana, we have to sort this thing out. I, George Albert Omore Magoha, having been appointed a cabinet secretary in the government of Kenya, do swear that I will at all times be faithful to the Republic of Kenya, that I will obey, respect, uphold this constitution of Kenya and all other laws of the Republic, that I will well and truly serve the people of the Republic of Kenya in the office of Cabinet Secretary, that I will undertake to hold my office as Cabinet Secretary with honor and dignity that I will be a true and faithful counselor to the president for the good management of public affairs 
of the Republic of Kenya, that I will not divulge directly or indirectly such matters as shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my duties and committed to my secrecy except as may be required for the due discharge of my duties as cabinet secretary and that I will perform the functions of my office conscientiously and to the best of my ability. So help me God. When you are talking about integrity, first of all, <laughs> you must start by respecting your body, your own body, the naked body, not the clothed one. Are we together? You respect it. You don't abuse it, you bring it up the way God has made you to bring it up. And that is the first challenge because you are millennial children, all of you. So if you don't respect your body, there is no way you are going to respect any other person's body. You don't inject your body with strange things. You don't uh, uh, put things in your body that are uh, not important. The body is, is we, call, we say it's a temple as a surgeon. We say the body is a, it's like a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at uh, what I do for a living until I was appointed here, you find that uh, when you are dealing with a naked body, everybody is the same especially after you have cut the skin. Whether you are a Muzungu who has about 300 billion in the bank, or some beggar on the street who just eats once every three days, or a normal person, the best life is that one where you struggle. Today you don't have money for milk, you are looking for it, it comes, then you carry the money for milk to your children. All those people are the same before God. And I think perhaps why Dr. Mwangi asked me to come here is to come and tell you that uh, in order to succeed in this life, you must first of all respect yourself. Because if you respect yourself, then you don't have to copycat anybody. Do you get the point? You have a shoe which has a hole under it, but that shoe belongs to Magoha, son of Magoha, and it is my shoe, so you can go to hell. You don't have to worry about somebody who has 10 pairs. That guy with 10 pairs should copy you. To see that you are so comfortable, you have to start to believe in yourself. It doesn't matter, absolutely, which school you go to. It doesn't matter, absolutely, which family you come from, or whether you have parents or not, it doesn't matter. Take it from me. It does not matter. What matters is whether you believe in God and you believe in yourself. And then the other thing I want to talk about is, it's important for you to know what you want in life. What is it that you want? Don't be fantastic. Do you get the point? I get disappointed when you ask all the top children, what do you want to be? I want to be a neurosurgeon. What do you want to be? Is it, is it, uh, they are not thinking. What is it that you want to be that you, that is, that you really want to be in life? Who says if, if you, are, you have a top grade, you can't be a teacher? Because in my life, I think a teacher is the most important person. I don't know it is why, why you don't say so, but a teacher is perhaps the most important person. Because he trains everybody. I'm not saying you should be a teacher, but have an open mind which God has given you. In your, in your body, in your mind, what is it that you want to be? Know it and you don't wait until it is the last minute. Do you get the point? It will help you to concentrate and to do. Of course, you have already escaped the new curriculum. If the new curriculum was there, we will have put you into various trenches, so it will be easier for you. I know Nikona Suramaya, that's one. <laughs> but, but having said so, my strength, first of all, comes from God and my firmness. 
So don't tell me to stop being firm. I shall not listen to you. There are people out there who have decided to demonize my firmness for, arrog for arrogance. How can a stare boy be arrogant? Our issues are uh, going on to make sure that uh, we, our exams have uh, the integrity that they must have and that the process uh, is well done and that we ensure that uh, the exam papers that are actually entrusted uh, to us are well maintained, well secured, you know, until uh, the children sit for the, uh, for the exams. And so I think as far as preparations are, um, are concerned, we have done everything possible, everything. Everybody and everything is under surveillance right now. Yeah? So we do not expect malpractice, we do not expect uh, anything to fall off track. Uh, we have trained, we have had discussions, we have consulted, and we have given proper guidance. Uh, and so we expect everything uh, to go on uh, well. Um, and as we move on, I think anything that we hear, we will act on immediately. We said uh, when we had the meeting at Bangani, that uh, anybody who's found to be practicing uh, an illegality will be quickly apprehended. We will not wait for the end of the exams. Any school that is involved in a malpractice will be closed down and no candidates will be allowed to sit for the exams in that school. And so it's very, very serious. Our children must be allowed to actually participate in these exams without being encouraged uh, to cheat without being encouraged to become criminals at a young age um, and therefore expect the adults around them, the teachers, their parents to guide them well. We will not allow for malpractice. Of trade unions, which even before Africa gained independence, have had the pulse of the population and is thus a reliable partner in education. And yes, we need your continuous support. I recall the contribution of our own trade unionists the late Tom Boyer, the late Tom Boyer, uh, who understood, is one of them, who understood the power of quality education, and for this reason, not only facilitated the establishment of local training colleges, but also sought scholarships for our students abroad. We thank our very own uh, Dr. Francis Atwoli, who keeps reminding us and does not tire of the plight of our workers and of their families. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude by recognizing the thought catalysts that are present here from the ILO, from UNICEF, and from UNESCO, who will help us turn this symposium into a laboratory of ideas, even as we share experiences and best practices. I look forward to outcomes that will enable us to improve delivery of education, which is an economic necessity and a moral imperative. I close with the observation of Kenya's founding father, His Excellency President Jomo Kenyatta, who said the following, and I quote, our children may learn from the heroes and about the heroes of the past. Our task is to make ourselves the architects of the future. I thank you very much for your attention. To move around uh, each and every university, uh, uh, in Kenya because a number of our universities are faced with uh, problems, particularly finance. Uh, uh, you get them complaining about underfunding and we are encouraging that uh, they must uh, generate uh, their own revenue because the exchequer as it is now is not going to be able to uh, continue funding more because in Kenya, education takes 25.9%. So we have to find other ways of uh, 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 creating and generating revenue for universities, and they have to look at other uh, revenues. The normal school calendar has given out, the normal school day should start from 8 a.m. up to 3.45 p.m. My name is uh, Julius Migos Ogamba. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Oh, that's nice. that's and, um, <laughs> thank you very much. I went to school properly. I actually went to school now and stayed in Kenyoro Primary School, Kitutu Chachenov. Then I went to Homer Bay Primary School. And then I left Homer Bay Primary School.
school, I went to Kabarak High School. And uh, yes, very good schools, I might add. And then from there, I went to the University of Nairobi. And uh, where I graduated with a Bachelor of Laws. And then thereafter, I went to further training in the University of London. I wish to most sincerely thank you for inviting the learners of Kenya to Set Lodge Eldred. This is a memorable event that shall forever be engraved in the minds of these learners. Your Excellency, as these learners trained and competed from the zonal level to the sub-county level all the way to the national level, top in their minds was to perform in Set House before the head of state and the whole country. For those gathered here today, it is a dream come true. Your Excellency, the Ministry of Education, under your strategic leadership, has put the CBC agenda firmly back on track. There is a clear path arising out of the recommendations that were presented to you by the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms. These are some that are undergoing legal processes, but those that were operational in nature are being implemented to the letter. I'm glad to report to you that Junior School has firmly taken root to the extent that at this gathering, Your Excellency, We've witnessed presentations by junior school as a standalone. The committee earmarked categories most specifically for junior school. Next year, we shall be having a full junior school and the learners at that level will compete totally independently. This category of learners will be lucky since some will be charting the sports, science and performing arts pathway which is a direct product of the CBC. Your Excellency, sir, over the last nine days, we had a total of 145,800 participants broken down as follows. The preschool participants were 12,354. The primary school were 29,876. Junior school were 22,876. Secondary school were 43,256. The teacher training colleges were 13,965. TVETs came in at 8,987. Universities at 3,809, making a total of over 145,800. This increase, Your Excellency, in the numbers is attributable to the new entries by the junior school. The learners were comfortably accommodated in our learning institutions within Eldoret County.